Hello everyone welcome to Tkinter Hub. In the previous video, we have added some functionalities in this project. If you are new watching this project series video, then welcome. You can check out project playlist, link available in description box. So let me quickly show you what we have created in previous video. Let's create a student account for generate student card. Here you can see student card generated. So in the previous video, we have created save student card and print student card functionalities. Here you can see student card saved in a directory. So let's check out print student card functionality. Here you can see generated student card opened in windows print pictures application so here student can print their student card and also in the previous video we have worked with student login page we have created a functionality which will check student entered id number and password validation so in this video we will create recover forget password functionality, which will help the student for recover their forget password. And also in this video, we will solve a problem from our project. Basically a subscriber tell us in comment box that when a student register without adding a photo, it gives an error in the student card. So well done dear subscriber. So let's create a student account without adding student picture. So you can see nothing happen anything. So here is the error occurs. Attribute error. STR object has not attribute read. Actually student data has successfully added in database. Basically this error comes from draw student card function. So first, we will solve this problem. And then we will continue this project. Here is add account page function. So I will start from here to explain this problem how it occurs. Basically string var is a type of string variable which will store string data. And the initially we have set string var variable value empty. And here is open pick function which will ask to student for open picture. And we are storing student open picture path in this variable. But in our case, we are not opening and adding any picture. So this pick path variable will still empty. So let's come down here. So here in the check input validation function, after checking all student input validations. So here, basically we are checking if the student picture path is given, means student opened a picture. Then here we are just getting student opened picture binary data for add picture in database but in our case we are not opening and adding any picture so this if condition will false then else condition will execute basically here we are getting binary of this picture as student picture for add in database so here code will work successfully and student data will be added in database so here is point to be noticed basically error is occurs from this function because this given pick path variable is still empty and student picture path is required to this function for add student picture in student card let's see how we will solve this problem so here this if condition will false then else condition will execute so in the else condition we will set this picture path to the pick path variable because student picture path is required to draw student card function for add student picture in student card. So if a student will not add their picture, then this picture will consider as student picture. Now problem will be solved. Now let's test it.
Here you can see. Problem solved. No any error occurs. Now you can save or print student card. So we have solved this problem. Now let's continue our project. Now we will start to create forget password page. Basically if a student will forget their account password, then student will have a forget password option, which will help the student for recover their account password. Let's start to create forget password page. Here is student login page function. Here we will create forget password page function. Here I am creating a frame. These two attributes will add a round color border in frame. Let's call this function, for see their results. So here is a error occurs. Name BG is not defined. Actually here I have mistakenly put this variable name, which is not defined. So here I will put this variable name, which we are using standardly from previous videos. Let's run again. Here you can see, frame created with a round color border. Here I am creating a label. Here I am creating a button. Let's add functionality to close button. When close button will be clicked, then forget password page frame will be destroyed. Here I am creating a label.
Here I am creating the entry box. So we have created forget password page. Now we will start to create functionality, which will recover student forgot password. But before I will explain to you, how we will recover student forgot password. In case if a student will forgot their account password. Then simply here student will enter their ID number, and then press next button. And then we will check, if student entered ID number is valid. Then using student entered ID number, we will get student account password from database. After getting student password, we will send forgot password to student, via student email address, as here is mentioned. So let's start to create functionality. First here we will check. Student entered ID number is valid or not. If you are not knowing about this function, you must watch previous videos where we have created and used this function. Basically this function will take a ID number argument and then it will check given ID number as exists in database. If the given ID number will exists in database, then it will return existing ID number, otherwise it will return none. Also we will display message box, if a student will enter incorrect or invalid ID number. Let's add this function to next button. Let's if I enter incorrect ID number. You can see, ID number is incorrect or invalid. Now I will enter a valid ID number. You can see, now it's showing ID number is correct. So here if the student entered ID number, will correct, then we will start processing of recovering student forgot password. So here I have paste some line of code. Basically here we will establish connection with database, for recover student forgot password. So here I will execute SQL query, which will fetch student password from database. 
Using student ID number, we will get student forgot password. Table name is data. Here we will put student entered ID number. Basically this query will retrieve password from database, where student entered ID number will match. Here we are getting fetched data from database. Fetch all function will return data in a list object, so we will slice return value. Here we will print fetch password. Notice, here we will print this fetched password. For temporary, after complete testing we will remove this print statement. Avoid printing any sensitive information from your program, it's not a good practice. Now let's test it. Here I will enter a correct ID number. Here you can see, password printed and password is printed with tuple. Actually fetch all function will return value in list of tuple, so we will slice it two time. You can see now it's printed in plan text. Now we can get student password using student ID number. And also we need to get student email address, for send forgot password to student via email address. Same as, we will get student email address, as we are getting student password. Here we will fetch student email address from database, where student entered ID number will match. Also here we will commit connection. Basically connection.commit function, will transaction this query. Here you can see student email address fetched, so we have get student account password, an email address. Now when student will press next button, then we will ask confirmation to student. So we will ask to student that, we will send your forgot password, via your following email address. So let's add confirmation box.
In some previous videos, we have created a custom confirmation box. Here we will display student email address with message. Also here we will print confirmation box response. If the student will press yes button, then confirmation box will return true value, otherwise it will return false. Here you can see confirmation box appear. Here you can see, true value returned. So if the student will press yes button, then we will send student account password to student, via student email address. Now we will create a separate function, which will send an email, to a given email address. This function will takes three arguments. First argument will email address, where we will send email. Second argument will message, which we want to send in email. Third argument will subject of sending email. Now we will import some necessary modules, for sending email using Python. The SMTP lib module is a Python built-in module, basically SMTP lib allows that you to send emails, using the simple mail transfer protocol, it provides a straightforward way, to connect to an SMTP server. The mimimultipart is a class, this is a part of the email.mime.multipart module. In Python email package, it is used to construct email messages. Mime text it allows you to create email message parts, with plain text content or HTML content. smtp.gmail.com is a SMTP server address, which is provided by Google for sending email messages, using Gmail account. Port 587 is used for email message submission, which is traditionally used for SMTP server. The username will email address of sender, which want to send email to clients. And also sender Gmail account password, will required for send email to clients. But here we will not enter Gmail account password, because Google no longer support less secure apps option. So here we will put a generated app password key, so in the move on the video, we will discuss about how we can generate a app password key. Here I have created a Python file. Basically in the email address variable, I have put my email address, which will a sender email address. And in the password variable, we will put generated app password key, which we will discuss about in the move on video. Some security reasons, I will not include these informations in our Python project file. So I will import email address and password from new Python file which I have created.
Here I will put my email address. As sender email address. Here we are creating a MimaMultiPart object, which will represent the email message, with the set of relevant headers, such as the sender, receiver, and subject. Here I have set the headers of email message. This attach function is used to attach a message. Mime text function is used to create a message. Text argument will text content of message. The second argument specify the subtype of the content. By default value of subtype is plan, like plan text. So we will set subtype HTML, because we will send email message in HTML type format. Now message is ready to send an email. Now we will establish connection with SMTP server, for send email to student. Using SMTP class we will connect SMTP server. Host argument will address of host server. So we are using SMTP.gmail.com host server, which is provided by Google for sending email messages over the internet. Port number we will use 587, which is traditionally used for submission emails. Start TLS function allows you to that establish encrypted communication between your program and the server before transmitting any sensitive information, such as login credentials or email content. Now we will give authentication access of sender Gmail account to SMTP server for sending emails. So we will give authentication access, by providing username and password. Now we will discuss about generated app password key, which we have not generated yet. So let's see how we will generate app password key, for give Gmail account authentication access to SMTP server. Simply you need to open your browser. So here I have opened Microsoft Edge browser, you can use any browser. Simply here you need to search, manage Google account, then press enter. Open the first website, myaccount.google.com. Here I have already signed with my Gmail account, which we are using as a sender email address. Here in this site search bar, simply search here app password. Click on App Password option. Simply click on this option, then select Custom Name. Here you can enter any name or etc. Then simply click on Generate button. So here 16 letters of key, will be generated. Simply copy this key and then put in the password variable. 
Now we will test SMTP server authentication will accept or not. By sending an email message, we will test SMTP server. Using sendmail function, we will send email message to an email address. Sendmail function will takes three arguments. From address argument will email address of sender. To address argument will email address of receiver. MSG argument will message content, which we want to send in email. As string function will return formatted message in string form, which we have attached in the body of email, as a HTML content subtype. And also here we will add a print statement, for check above code executed. Let's test this function. Here we will send an email message using this function. So we will send an email message to this email address. So we will send email message in HTML format, because here we have set message content subtype in HTML. Here I will write message in HTML format. You can set any subject. Let's open this email address of Gmail inbox, where we will receive email message. Here I have opened Gmail inbox. Here you can see receiver email address. Now let's test it. So it will take few seconds to send email message, depending on your internet speed. Here you can see. Print statement executed means code successfully worked. Let's check out Gmail inbox. Here I have received an email message. Here you can see we have received email successfully. That means SMTP server is working properly. Now we will use this function to send student forgot password via student email address. Simply here we will check, if the student will press yes button in confirmation box, then means student want to recover forgot password. If the confirmation box will return true value, then we will send student forgot password to student. Receiver email address will be student email address, which we have fetched from database. Here is this message which we will send to student. Here we will put student forgot password. Now let's test it. So we need to create a new student account, because we have added this example email address when we have created the following student account. Let's create a new student account.
So in this email address, we will receive recovered password. And also notice this ID number. And also we will set this password. Here I will enter new student account ID number, which we have created recently. So we will receive forgot password in this email address. Here is printed mail successfully sent. Let's check out Gmail inbox. So here I have received a email. Subject is password recovery. Here you can see, we have successfully recovered student forgot password via student email address. Now press subscribe button if you have not subscribed Tkinter Hub. So we have created forget password page, and also we have created recover forgot password functionality. Now we will link forget password page, with this forget password option, in student login page. Here is student login page function. Simply here we will call forget password page function, when forget password option will clicked from student login page. Then forget password page will appear in above student login page. Let's add this function to button. So we have created forget password functionality, and also we have solved a problem from this project. And that's for this video. In the next part of video, we will continue this project. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe our channel for more videos.